Um, two words of the Edinburgh Fringe. It's, oh, it's a fuck fest, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I went as a stand-up to the Edinburgh Fringe, oh God, it was so scary, because I'd been there before, and I knew how it worked um, from an outsider's perspective. Um, but I was living in Germany at the time and I was performing stand-up living in Berlin. So I didn't know anyone in the British scene and it was very intimidating. And I went to Edinburgh to do these newcomer competitions. <laughs> so I had to go to these newcomer competitions being like, hi, I do it in Germany. Are you guys all friends already? Cool, I'll join in the gang. But like, luckily everyone was very nice. And they were like, who's that freaky German kid? And they let me in the gang, which was nice but that's my first time going off to the stand-up, just walking around like Bradford. All crowds are the same in many ways because they just want to laugh and be entertained. Obviously there are exceptions to that. There's always like a Dave just staring at you like, what's your truth? And it's like, not you. Um, I think Edinburgh crowds are quite savvy. I also think, I think a lot of people will say that Edinburgh crowds are like super switched on because they've watched so much comedy. I think they're super switched on because they've watched loads of comedy. I also think they're drunks. Um, because it's a festival and they're just drinking all day, even on a Tuesday afternoon. I love an Edinburgh crowd. They are fun. I think the Edinburgh Fringe is a staple and it is really similar each year. Like obviously there's always different shows. There's a slightly different like thing going on because like the shows that are hitting are different and like the hotspot is different. But in general, it's just a group of nerds with nothing better to do with their summer who just want to like laugh and feel like they're part of something. Because we're usually not. Oh my God, best experience with the Fringe. Probably going to the charity shops on the first day each year and buying all the jigsaw puzzles to do a loan in my flat I've paid too much money for. Um, no, the best experience of the Fringe is, uh, it's the same as anywhere, but it's doing a good gig or having your show work and then coming out and there's always just a bar right there and you can just sit and have a drink and do that thing, the reverending. Does anyone talk about reverending? It's like where the loser comics, they hang out outside of the gig and they wait for loads of praise. And at first you're like, I'm never gonna do that, that's gross. And then in Edinburgh, you're such a broken shell of a human being. You're just sort of way like wandering around being like, praise me, did you see me earlier? What a crazy coincidence, I thought, remember you from the stash um, and that, doing that. <laughs> I should definitely have thought of a better answer. I sound like such a prick. Worst experience of the Fringe. Oh my God. I was once really hungover and I vomited in my mouth on stage. Um, I once started my period on stage while making eye contact with a reviewer. Um, oh God. I, I once met someone who's very important in comedy and I knew I had to make a good impression, but I had a mouthful of wine and I went, hi, and like dribbled down myself. And they went, oh no, it's cool, I'm a mouth breather. And they were like, what? And I was like, so my nose has got, and they walked away. Um, uh, I got my heart broken at Edinburgh Fringe. I also think I might have broken a heart at Edinburgh Fringe, probably not. In fact, I think I've had my heart broken at Edinburgh Fringe twice, which is great because it's rainy and I walked around like all depressed. Um, oh my God, I've binged a lot of times up there. Oh, worst moment is when you order takeaway food because you think your housemates are out and they come back and they see all the food and you're like, it's the show, it's the show. And you feel like you've been caught like wanking or something. Yeah, next question. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, the one that, the worst one I'd say is next. You know, when they're just sort of like, next, next comic, awful. Like I've had that a couple of times and I hate it because you're sort of like, like, I agree with them. Like, I'm like, yeah, there's another one coming. Don't worry about it. And trust me, I don't want to be here either right now. Like, next, I'm with you. And the best tackle. Oh, you know what it is? Sometimes, oh. there's, there's a group of, like, older women, and they mean it's so supportive, and you say something about yourself. Like, I'll say, I'm overweight. But I don't mind being overweight. It's all fine. But they panic, and they feel the need to yell out, like, you're beautiful. You're perfect the way you are. And it's like, I know I'm beautiful, but I'm also, like, you know, washing with a rag on a stick. And it's like that sort of like heckle where you're like, you're trying so hard, but also like it's, you think I should be upset, but I'm, I'm good. It's like those heckles that are really hard to deal with. I mean, there's lots of really good, well-written Ronaldo's by one saw the really established, amazing comic on stage who's clearly just super, super tired. Just look at the audience and just please laugh. And I thought it was so funny. So that. I like watching people broken. There's something wrong with me. I'm a horrible person. Hairy bloody guy. They love it. No, my family are really, really cool. They're very liberal. My mum loves it. My first show was mainly about my mum and she likes attention, so do I. So she's completely cool with it. As long as she's like represented enough and her name is said in full, uh, she's happy, yeah.